So I'm going to move on to the transistors. I've taken kind of that the board out line that I found uh, in the documentation and I've color coded the transistors by type. So there's five BC547s here in green I plan to install at this point. Uh, I don't want to get these wrong just because the leads are pretty close together and unsoldering these would not be a pleasant experience. Uh, oh, what did I do? I actually opened the wrong side of the bag. Oh well. Cut off the wrong end of the bag rather than the end that was folded. So let me pull out five of these. That's certainly more than five. I ordered ten. We've got a few extras. The silk screen, the flat in the silk screen should match here. There's a bunch of ways to put these in. I really need the better glasses. So one way is to kind of form the leads a little bit in head of, ahead of time in that little pattern and just kind of work it around. So it's basically taking the center lead and bending it out a tad bit. So BC547 it's on the silk screen. I'm also looking at the diagram. There's one there. I can't get that center lead to spring out a little bit. BC547 right here. If you really struggle with these, something I've done in the past is trim the lead lengths at an angle, a pretty severe angle like I'm doing there. And that way you can start the longest lead and then kind of work your way through the next longest, the next longest. And by having them different lengths like that, they won't pop back out when you put them in. And that's something that actually works pretty well. Uh, I've got one more right there. So really whatever works best for you. For me just kind of bending that center lead out so it's closer to the shape of what's on the board. Works well enough. I'm going to start with the bigger tip here that I've been using for all the soldering on these. Um, some of those moved a little bit. Last time I worked with this footprint I used a, a very fine tip and in the end that caused me problems that I wasn't expecting with bridges and I finally went back to my normal size tip here and actually had better luck and I think that's because the larger tip can throw more heat down quickly onto the board than that little tiny sharp tip I had could. Those all look reasonably square. I'm not unhappy with that. I can hit the base pin on them all. And then I want to flip the board around. Can't actually hit the base pin on this one, but that's two of the three pins or solder on each. And I'm not going to flip the board around to give me a little easier access to the final pin. These are actually soldering in very easily, so my fretting over them because of that previous experience obviously unnecessary, but I, I'm a born warrior, so just good and bad. Okay, I don't see any bridges. Yeah, 
now that previous board is a board I designed that I got that solder bridge on I could not see it until I got as I recall a fair amount of magnification in place and then it was obvious you know I couldn't unsee it once I saw it but with regular glasses I just couldn't see it uh, apologies if my head's in the way I'm gonna look at these one more time that should be all five of the BC 547s I'm actually gonna go ahead and update the parts list at this point the 22 picofarads are already in those were installed by the gentleman that sold me the board the .22 we're not actually going to use the .47 is in that's C1 the 100 microfarad electrolytic is in oh, he actually called out his own colors yellow, red LED, I'm, okay, I added the LED green. Anyhow, I've got LEDs in, and I'm happy with the colors I used at this point. Uh, those diodes are all in. We're not going to use the linear regulator. The relays aren't in. The crystal is already in. Pre-installed. The PTC is installed. The switches aren't. The P-channel MOSFET's installed. We've just installed the BC547s. BC547, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we put in 5. So those are in. I found trimmers. Uh, we didn't have one of the trimmers installed in the previous video, and I found one right there that fit the footprint and, and looks just a slightly different color from the other one I found uh, in my toolkit. I've actually used a 16 pin socket. Man, I'm just having no luck breaking the lead today. The buzzer is in BZ1. So I didn't order MPS AO6s originally. I've got some ordered now from DigiKey. Uh, come in a USPS delivery, so about four days. So I can't put those in at the moment. But we can come back and start to address It's kind of a shame we can't, because I'm going to hit a spot here where I could power it up. And I probably could power it up even if I don't have those transistors in place just to see if it talks to the LCD if the computer actually starts up. So these are all the MPS A06s. So the blues are the MPS A56s. And this is where this isn't going to be fun. A, I have no idea how old these are stock-wise. They're on a car cardboard backing, paper tape, and the leads are not formed for this uh, footprint on the board. I could not find the ones he called for and dug around for some substitutions. And these are, you know, six A's, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight along there. Can I get eight to cut off? One, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. I don't honestly know how much luck I'm going to have bending the leads a little bit and forcing these into place. We'll find out here. Uh, 
if I can pick it up. Okay, it actually pushed through. It isn't horrible. It's not great. They're obviously not going in a square. I would like. They're pretty loose in there. Well, that one's in face in the wrong direction. Wouldn't that have been perfect? Just solder one lead on each, and then I'll check them for square again. I don't expect perfection here. The problem is the leads are all kind of overlapping on top of each other. Oh, really? That's how you're going to be? What the heck? Okay. This has become frustrating that suddenly this thing does not want to hold on to the board. I'm going to attempt to square them all up. two of the three pins. I'm going to trim down the pins I've already soldered to create clearance. detailed work here. All in all, it's a nice looking board. Uh, layout's pretty logical. You know, there's a definite flow through the layout of the board, just as there is through the circuit. So, it, you know, visually it makes sense to me. I don't think he provides a schematic. I haven't seen one. But still, I can guess at what a lot of this is doing. Well, don't have to guess. it. It's really obvious what are pin drivers and etc. I don't want to have to reach around things with the soldering pencil tip. So I've got the pins I'm soldering over to the right with the center pin, which I believe is the base off to the left, the one I previously soldered, and that way it's out of the way. Bridges. I don't 
see any. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those off. Down here. Oh, thank you for the large fireworks. A56. So this is Q12, 13, 14, 15. Q12, 13, 14, 15. 17, 18, 19, 20, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I'm going to, I think, wrap the transistor video up here. I will finish the rest of these off camera. And of course, I've got to wait for these to be delivered for over here. But you know, it's coming together. It's looking pretty sharp at this point. Uh, You know, I'm not unhappy with where we are at this point, so I'm not sure why I put it in there, quote, upside down, but I did. Pretty happy so far. So, uh, of course, I just said it. I'll wrap this one up, and I'll see you in a future video.